Hi everyone, I hope that you hear me. I'm just testing, we're gonna start in about eight minutes. I'm just testing everything here. And uh, yeah, we can see if you can see me on the chat. Hi, hi. Hi, Kyle. How's it going? I'm going to start in about seven minutes. Hi, Harry. I'm Neve, by the way, if you haven't seen all my uh, posts. Let's see. Hi, Martin. Hi, Camila. Hi, Gitan. Gitan. Oh, there are going to be names that I'm, I can't pronounce, so I apologize in advance. Hi everyone, we're gonna start in about uh, six minutes. So just get yourself some tea, coffee, whatever works. And uh, we'll start soon. Hi Darren, hi T Tia, Tia. I hope I said it right. Oh. Yes, you you guys are uh, challenging me with the names here. Stijen, Stijen. Where are you from? Stijen, Stijen. Can you guys hear me? By the way. Yes, yeah, so we'll start. Oh, perfect. We'll start in about five minutes. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try and rec we record it. We've had some technical difficulties with recordings before. This is why I was, I, 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 I'm kind of afraid to promise, but we are recording, yeah. If you have questions, by the way, uh, I I will I will tell it when we start. But I we can we can actually if you have questions now about things you you're interested at, you can tell me now, and uh, in the end we'll answer questions. You can also, you know, uh, keep it to the end. But if you have questions now, what we have five minutes, I'll try and address it in the in the presentation itself. So. By the way, who, who reg is registered to season out of, out of uh, here? Hope everyone. Yeah, there will be time in the end. I will, I will first do a presentation and then in the end, there will be a time for, a, for Q and A. Uh, I will try and, and, and stay as long as, as you guys uh, need me to. Um, the presentation is going to be about about an hour, and we, what we're going to in a bit we're going to start, and I'll tell you how how it's going to work. But the presentation and the questions, if you can keep it to the end, it'll be easier, uh, so I can keep my my track of of you know of a train of thought. But if you have questions now, we have three three minutes to until we start. So if you have questions now, you can uh, just uh, ask, and I'll try and address it in the in the presentation itself.
Sonia is going to join us in a second. Sonia is going to do mon monitor the chat because I'm probably not going to be able to look at the chat and do the presentation. So she will uh, kind of uh, send the links if there is need to be links or uh, if you have any questions, um, you know, just it's better if you wait to the end, but if, you, if there's something specific for the presentation, then she uh, asked Sonia uh, to if something I need to repeat or stuff like that, and she can uh, uh, call me or let me know in advance. Here is Sonia. So, uh, Son, we'll start in one minute, and uh, like I said, Sonia is going to uh, help me out with the with the chat because I'm not going to be able to uh, go with the chat. Hey Abigail, how are you? Welcome, just on time. Uh, I think we're gonna, what do you reckon? We're gonna wait uh, one, two minutes to get uh, more people coming or we're just gonna start? Uh, I think let's start. People can join us uh, as we go. All right. So let's get, I'll get rid of the chat and then I'll explain to you how I'm going to work with it. Okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Niv, uh, as you guys probably probably know. Uh, I've been in the acting industry for quite a while now uh, with Season. And uh, soon I'm going to explain to you what, what is Season and why it's so, uh, it's a really cool app, a lot more than, than just a crew platform. Uh, but we're here for to find a job, so we'll focus on, on this uh, uh, department, how to get in the industry, uh, or if we are in the industry, how to uh, get advanced and how to promote ourselves better. And we collected some tips that I hope can explain, uh, help explaining, uh, or help you guys uh, do it. Now, the one thing that uh, I'm going to do because I cannot look at the chat during the presentation. So as I explained, Sonia is here. She will help me to monitor uh, all the all the chat and all the questions. There will be time in the end. Uh, I'm going to, to wait as long as you guys need. Um, well, to a point, uh, but I will wait, wait uh, you know, and, and answer questions in the end. Just so just bear with me. Hopefully I can answer a few questions during the presentation. And uh, yeah. Let's let's get ready to to start. So welcome everyone who joins or everyone who is here for, for a little bit. And let's start. So what is Cizone? Cizone is actually not just a crew platform, as I said. Cizone is a super app of the acting industry. That's we just we launched it the April 2021. And we are very proud and very uh, excited because this is uh, something that hasn't been done. Uh, there is no such app that covers everything you need in Yati, uh, basically from uh, finding a job or finding crew. If you're a, if you're in a, a, a boat or or if you're a captain or if you're a manager, uh, to manage your yacht from yacht expenses, the administration work. Uh, all the, the charters and even finding suppliers, service providers, and we have more exciting things coming uh, during the end. Uh, but the idea that you, you start the season as you start looking for work and you stay uh, with us basically for your whole career. career. 
So we have tools for, for pretty much for everyone, uh, which is something that I thought is, is uh, quite necessary. Um, okay, I'm gonna be intending to make it a full screen. So sorry about that. Let's see how I can do this. Mm -hmm. Is that better? Son Sonia, let me know if that's better. Okay, I will continue because I don't see the chat. Okay, so this is season. Basically everything you need in, in the adding industry and what we are for here is to uh, present the crew zone, uh, basically the model, how to uh, connect boats and yachts. Now, the most important thing to, to understand uh, is that we're not a crew agency. We don't get paid for placement. Uh, we just, we do it, it's free for everyone. And we do it as, as a service to, to the community, uh, basically for, for you as a crew and for, for the yachts to kind of uh, help everyone attach. We, we see ourselves as like Uber of yachting, basically. Uh, the, the, way we, the way we are, we're a digital platform where you can put yourself out there in a nice, very nice uh, format uh, of, of CV that I'll show you how to do it. And boats can find you or they can find you through looking at the map next to, to them or they post job offers and uh, then you apply to them and they'll see you as it is now. Uh, since we launched in April uh, 2021, we had over now, it says 6.30, but that was like two days ago. Now it's like almost 645 job offers posted on the system. Uh, all real job offers will tell you about the difference between the, the real and not real job offers and all this stuff. Uh, we have over 20,000 uh, crew members uh, who signed up, uh, some uh, with, with profile, some just signed up and waiting a little bit. Uh, I suggest to everyone that is in here or uh, that want to get to get on board, uh, start to create your profile. It's really, really fast. So register to see zone and uh, yeah, let's we'll do it together. And it's pretty easy. Uh, so that's a uh, crew zone. And this is basically what we're gonna do here. So like I explained to you, uh, we're gonna see how we start in, in the yachting career and where to start in the yachting career, the different path you can, we can choose and which basic courses we can take, uh, how to create the CV, uh, CV that stands out and we'll show you the, why it's so important to, to create a really good CV. Uh, we're gonna try and identify some red flags because there is, especially when, when trying online, there is quite a lot of um, risky uh, and, and just scammers and there's a lot and we can, we can figure them out quite quickly and we'll show you a little bit of, of, the, of the science for it. Um, preparation for an interview. Hopefully we'll get to the point of, of the interview, which is really, really important. And then there is a few tips to, to help you with that. And then in the end, we'll have some questions. So let's get right into it. Uh, I'll explain to you a little bit about, about myself um, in, in, just, in just a bit uh, about my, my career and how I've, I've become. Um, part of, of it and then part of season. Uh, so let's go to the basics. Uh, Sonia, if you can please uh, put the link, first link to the registration of season. If anyone is, is not registered, I would highly recommend to register to season on the chat. And uh, also let's uh, put the link to our blog uh, because we have quite a, a lot of information in our blog that is worth reading. Uh, if you want to, to spend a little bit of time and, and reading a little bit more deep into the different things. Um, in here, for example, we talk about uh, locations. So where to start, uh, which is something that is, is known to some, uh, to some of you and to some of you maybe it'll be, it'll be new. Uh, but as you know, the yachting industry is uh, divided by geographic locations and seasons. And we have the, I'm talking about usually, mostly the, the, the Northern hemisphere, which I'm, I'm more familiar with. Um, but in the Southern Hemisphere is, is also the centers we, we're not going to touch. But in the Northern Hemisphere, the main centers of yachting, so you have the Mediterranean, which is most of the yachts go there during the summertime. And you have two big centers. You have Antibes, 
and you have Palma. There is a little bit of difference in each, in each center in case of, of which type of vote you, you want to get in. Um, I, highly, I recommend that you read the, the, the post. Uh, it's interesting. I can go in a little bit deeper later if you want. In the US, uh, Fort Lauderdale is the major uh, hub of, of yachting, um, basically everything during, during, the, during the winter time. During the summertime, actually Newport, Rhode Island, is a good place for, for sailing yachts, mainly, but not only. Uh, in, in the Caribbean, you have two major centers where the big boats are. You have Antigua and St. Martin. Now, I'm not going to touch at all in this, in, in this uh, webinar about visas. It is a huge issue, a huge major issue, especially now uh, with, with the different stuff. So um, maybe later we'll have time to answer a little bit uh, during the, the, the questions, if you have questions about visas and stuff like that. But this is quite a research that every country has their own uh, need, especially now in the, in the COVID area. So um, I decided to, to not go too deep into it, uh, but we'll see if there is interest, we'll, we might go a little bit. Uh, now, so when you start, you have different ways of how to, to, to find your first job. The first, and then that's the classic, the classic way, how it used to be when I started, when the internet was uh, still uh, in, uh, you know, walking on, on with diapers and, and just starting. Uh, you had to be where the boats are. So you, you, you would go to where the boats are. You would go and talk with every, with every boat, with every captain, go to the bars, to the crew houses where everyone uh, is. And that's basically was your, pretty much your only way to, to get your first job. It is still true to, to certain, to certain uh, amount. Uh, this is still a very good way to, to, find, to find job and you can create personal connections. Uh, the disadvantage of it uh, that you have, it, that you need a, at least the flight ticket and two months uh, living expenses, which can be quite a lot. Uh, on arrival, there is starting to be quite a lot of legal issues involved. When I when I started, there was no no such uh, enhancement on that. But they're putting a, a little bit more effort into preventing this kind of dog walking uh, situation, especially in the states. And there is marina securities that are a lot more strict now, with that you cannot enter the marina. So this option that was the, the classic option is is getting a little bit uh, sm smaller and harder. To, to, to do. So we need to try and find different ways to, to approach. Uh, this is just uh, maybe maybe a game. I don't see the chat too bad. Let me see the chat and you tell me. We start from the right, from the left to the right. Which one is the left top corner? See if anyone can guess. This. That's Antigua. Okay, in here we got in the middle we got Dubai, and here that's Sonia knows that's Antibes or Monaco, and Palma here for Lotedale and Saint Martin. Nice, good work, Piapi. All right. That was just to get us excited a little bit because uh, the good thing about this, amazing thing about this industry is we get to see these beautiful, amazing places that we'd never get to see otherwise. All right. Other way to, to approach is the Facebook groups. This is mainly uh, how a lot of you guys probably uh, got to here, uh, which is great. It's free. There is tons of groups. Uh, the, it's kind of direct if someone uh, as, as for you, you put yourself out there, there's someone else put yourself out there. Um, there is some disadvantage of that, especially on the unregulated groups, uh, that your personal info is exposed. So I always suggest to not put your personal info on Facebook, um, your, your personal phone, or, or even your email can be, but well, sometimes you have to, but it, that's the one problem with, with the face, with Facebook, a lot of trolls. It, it, I've seen a lot of nasty um, remarks uh, in PMs, especially for girls and, and like weird, it's just weirdos out there, you know, in the, in the internet. Uh, so Facebook is not always the best and, and, and nice, nicest place to, to look for, for a job. Uh, one more thing, there's, it's, this is the place for a lot of scammers. Uh, they're trying to get something out, out of you. And uh, yeah, so a lot of jobs are not real. 
uh, not updated job offers. And Facebook itself is trying to block this option. So that also kind of shrinks as we go. And now about the, the, the algorithm of Facebook works that if you put yourself there, only about 3% of the group members actually see you and how much of them is, is the recruiter. So Facebook itself is, is again, it was, it was great, uh, but we see that the time on Facebook as a, as a place to look for work is kind of like shrinking. Uh, we, we enjoy it and we all use it when we can, but just, just so we know where, where we are headed. Uh, crew agencies, I love crew agencies. Yeah, I have nothing against crew agencies. Uh, for, with many crew agencies actually work with Season. They, they put the job offers and, and find crew with uh, using uh, Season. And the, the good thing about the crew agency is that they give a personal touch to the boat, um, to, the, to the crew. The disadvantage with crew agency is that usually if you start, they don't really have time to, to work with you uh, because this is their business. Um, someone that have two, three, four years experience worth more for them than uh, someone that have no experience. So usually when you start, at least in the first one or two years, they're not gonna, your help, you're not gonna, uh, find a lot of help in, in crew agencies. Uh, I'm not saying that there is crew agencies are bad, yeah? Just the way it, it works. Okay, one well, minute moving there. Okay. Other thing is the crew placement apps. Uh, basically, crew placement app, you have you have quite quite a lot of different different ways to do it. Uh, there is basically a digital base of, of crew profiles. The advantage, you apply from afar and you get a notification on, on job offers. Uh, you don't have to fly to where they, the, the boats are. The disadvantage with a lot of them, uh, again, the, you know, we, we all know uh, many jobs are, are not up to date. You, you know, they just aggregate from different places and just put it out there to have a lot, a lot of job offers. But, um, no one really controls what's going on there. Um, some of them actually ask for premium uh, from crew to, to get yourself ahead, basically, um, which is kind of defeats the, the purpose, I think. Um, and there's no one to speak with. You don't know what happened with your application after you applied. Um, and this is why season, I think, is a great way to, to go about it. Uh, basically, the, the, how we approach ourselves is a digital platform who cares. Uh, basically, uh, every, all the jobs on season are real job offers that actual uh, boats have to come in and put the, the, create the boat, put the job offer. Uh, it creates a little bit more work for them, but at least you know it's actual, the person is going to see your CV is, is a real person. And it, it, there's jobs every day. Uh, you can apply from wherever you are with your phone, from any device. Uh, we give a, a nice professional CV that will show you in a way how to do it. And you can manage your and store all the documents and your career further along the way, uh, which is very safe on an Amazon server, uh, which is full GDPR uh, compliant. Uh, GDPR is just the, the information, safety and information regulations, um, uh, the, the European standards uh, for that. And you get notifications and you know your status. And this is really important. I'll show you later how, how you can know your status. We have a really nice support center that with uh, Maria, which is uh, the best. She's, she's always helpful. And uh, we can reach her at any time. And of course, it's free. The disadvantage, and I'll explain to you a little bit uh, why we do it, is that you need to log into the system. So you're not going to get like a daily if, if you put your email uh, when you register, you're not going to get like every day an email from us. We decided that it's not like no one really likes it. And uh, we're not going to, to do it to, to kind of not harass you on the email. We'll, we'll put some newsletters and stuff if you, if you approach to get to get the information, but not constantly every day. And also uh, that you, we, you cannot approach directly the person like on Facebook, for example, the person that uh, published the, the job offer. And this is to protect them, to have them a, a safe space that they can save their time and be a little bit more, more efficient. So they, you put yourself out there, they put the job offers, and then they, they can uh, contact you directly 
uh, with the information you put. So overall, I, I really believe that Season is, is the best platform to find a job. So if you haven't registered, just go ahead and, and do it. Uh, even if you don't have any experience, it's a good to, to, to start and be out there. You never know who, uh, how your skills uh, might uh, reflect in someone that is looking. Okay, so now before we get to, to the story, to, to my, my personal uh, story, uh, which I'm not going to put too much on it. Um, the rule number one, it's we all start from zero. We have a lot of people from different back backgrounds here. Some come from, um, some come from uh, merchant ships, from cruise ship, from racers, from small boats, from their parents' home that had nothing to do with yachts before. And a lot of people, when they come, they think, oh, I've been 10 years in merchant ships. I have a lot of that experience, blah, blah, blah. Believe me, my experience, I came not from merchant ships, but from, from sailing a lot. When you come to the industry, we all start from zero. So we need to understand that. It's very important. We have to stay humble and put all of our egos on the side. And what matters is our skills, the hard work, and the, and the dedication we put to get into this industry. Okay, so this is one, I think it's always the number one rule uh, that we all, when we start, we start from zero. My story, I'll do it short because I'm talking too much anyway. Um, it, I just wanted to share my story because I know a lot of people here are applying for a lot of job offers. And I have to say that when I started in this industry straight after university, after I finished my um, degree in marine biology, uh, I was married then with my, my wife, which is a chef. With the, she's been a chef since 19 years old and run a high-end rest, restaurants, uh, been with over 10 crew. And uh, I have a lot of experience sailing from, from before. Um, and when I came to this industry, I thought I was a hot shot and we're just gonna go and find a job and be easy. And it wasn't the case. It took me a while until we, we got the job uh, we wanted a while of a lot of money that we we spent we took actually a loan to 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 go to Fort Lauderdale and, and and do that and basically working and surviving just by day working and and until we and going every day and going through there's not so many websites like that but just so you know that you're not alone if you finding it difficult and frustrated uh, we've all been there uh, once you get your first job it kind of like flow a lot easier uh, so put put that out there uh, give yourself this kind of, of of you know don't be too hard on yourself and and you'll you'll get there and uh, yeah and and again i'm i always remember that when i started it was hard for me and i understand the frustration some of you feel so i'm i'm with you on that you know Sonia, I see that uh, there is so, a few raised hands. So if you can, uh, uh, I, I'm sorry, I cannot see the, the chat, but I will I promise if there is anything important, just ask Sonia and she will, she will tell me on WhatsApp. <laughs> um, okay, so now when we start, oh, I, I didn't finish my story. After, after I, I, I got in the industry and we managed and obviously we worked hard and we, plan to be in this industry for two, three years, just to save a little bit of money and get our own boat. We ended up uh, staying in this industry for 15 years and I've been from a deckhand to, to a captain. And uh, yeah, it was the best, the best time of my life. Now, uh, if you hear a baby in the background, uh, that's my retirement plan. <laughs> uh, just uh, just retired uh, from, from yachting a couple of years ago uh, uh, with, with, together with COVID and, and, and a little baby and started immediately uh, pretty much uh, working with the season, which is uh, an amazing uh, opportunity, uh, amazing uh, app uh, that I'm very excited about. And so, yeah, life goes uh, as, as, as they should. And uh, so when you start, just choose your path. That is something that we cannot say when we start really, really just starting, but it has to be in the back of our minds because every boat has a different personality, different uh, vibe to it. If it's a motorboat, if it's a sailing boat, if it's a huge boat uh, of 60 meters, or if it's a 25 meter boat, each one finds where our comfort zone is. 
you know, they, they about, for example, like I get a lot of questions from, from people from cruise ships, if there is a bartender position or a laundry man position, that's on the big, big boats. As you get smaller, you'll see that the roles are not that defined. So you'll see a 25 meter boat that asks for a deck, a stew, cook, masseuse. And people that come from cruise ships will say, what, what the hell, like, what is that? But this is how the small boat works. You do everything. Uh, and this is, for some people, it's it great because it, it gives them the opportunity to do a lot of different things. And some people prefer they, to do to excel in one thing and do it really, really good. And, and you just have to kind of figure out your way as, as we go in the industry. And uh, this is the reason that you see the variation of, of, of uh, positions, basically, why you see sometimes a position that has so many definitions and, and sometimes a position that is very small. Um, so just choose your path. It's it's have have it in your back of your mind. Okay, and a little bit of warning to because we all hear you know we see the the reality TV. You see the fake background I have here, and we see the you know and it, it is an amazing life, amazing opportunity. We'll talk about this uh, yachting, but it's hard work and we have to understand it's not it, it's not a job it's it's a way of life when we put ourselves there we are 100 there this is our life yachting is our life and we are a yacht you are yachting you know it's not a, a regular job there's no routine no family time holidays is pretty much you work the hardest in the holidays because this is where everyone goes to vacation uh, you work 17 hours a day you're in the service industry uh, this is this is uh, what we are and, and what we do, um, basically just running on, on floating uh, or sailing on floating mini mini micro hotels. Um, and this is just something we have to understand when we, when we do it. So like I said, this is not a reality TV. I don't know how much of you, there is a lot of, of uh, newcomers to the industry that saw the, the reality TV on, uh, and, and thought that that's yachting. Uh, from my experience, actually, <laughs> The real life is not that far away from it, but this is not uh, real. Real is this. Real is a family, uh, basically a group of people working together, living together, experiencing life together. And this is the realest as it's going to get, <laughs> you know, um, an amazing opportunity. This is why we do it. We create adventure, experience, get friends, and obviously the money. Uh, we all know it's it's uh, very usually you get paid quite uh, nicely and you get to save quite a lot of uh, what you do. You don't pay rent, you don't pay um, for food. Um, the boat covers ba basically every everything for you. You get to be in these amazing places, and yeah, it's it's a great life. Hard work, but great life. That's why the saying is uh, work hard, play hard. Okay, let's get a little bit to the position we we have. So. We have a few departments. Uh, we have the deck department, interior departments, galley, engineering, and bridge. Bridge is the officers and the um, captain. So let's start with the deck. We'll do just the, the career path of, of, of a deckhand. The job of, of a deckhand is basically keep the work, the, the boat um, sparkling and shiny from the exterior side, uh, help with water sports uh, to the guest. Uh, drive the, the dinghy, the tenders, uh, get, get the guests uh, out and in from the boat. Basically, just making everyone looks better, makes the captain looks better when you un help anchoring or, do or docking. Uh, a good deckhand is very valuable. I, I always uh, believed in that. The basic uh, requirement you, you will need for to be a deckhand is obviously the STCW, the standard training certification and watch keeping. And uh, ENG or equivalent, which is a doctor's, uh, basically doctor um, um, permission that you are healthy. Uh, it's a specific do uh, doctor. So you cannot just get uh, any doctor. It has to be a specific doctor, uh, which I, I recommend to, to look online or we can, uh, I can try and find for you after if you want. Uh, the, the list of the, the, the MCA approved ENG or the RYA approved uh, ENG1 doctors. And, and Powerboard Level 2 is another course that for decades, I, I believe is, is becoming more and more and more important, uh, especially in Europe. Uh, they do check it. 
PowerBot level two, uh, that you have a license to actually operate a dinghy. Okay, another courses that you have is uh, like efficient deckhands and PDSD, which is the proficiency designated security duties, uh, mainly for bigger boats that has a security duties. Uh, those courses are, you know, it's always good, but I would put all my money in doing all the courses. So just do the basic courses, work your way and, and just gain more courses as you go. Uh, that's my, my um, uh, efficient deckhand you, you can do if you feel uh, that some people really helped. Uh, again, up to you. Interior, SCCW, NG1. Now it kind of depends. Uh, as, as a stu, you have, or stewardess, you have a lot more um, you work on the interior mainly, uh, basically on the housekeeping part department and cleaning the interior or doing the, the service uh, for, the, for the guests. Um, some courses that are nice to do is the power boat level two, if uh, on small boats, especially when, when you might need to go out to, sh to shore and do some shopping and stuff like that. So it's good. Silver service is a nice, uh, nice cor course to do. Again, nothing is, is, you don't have to do those courses. Make sure that, you know, it's just an extra stuff. And food and hygiene level two, which is uh, mandatory for, for, for the chefs, uh, but pretty much for everyone dealing with food. So a lot of times you will need to deal with food or if you're still cook and stuff like that, it's good to have these courses. Now, these courses are mandatory. When I'm saying mandatory, it's mandatory only for commercial boats. Uh, so a lot of private boats, you don't really need it, but I do believe that you want to have those basic courses. And again, only the, the stuff, not the one with the question mark, but those basic courses, it's kind of a must everywhere now. And the galley, uh, the galley is uh, well married to a chef. I, I have to say that it's the most important uh, job in the in the in the boat, especially when you do if you do charters, if you have guests, uh, that really makes a break a uh, 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 visit, and the good chef is is highly highly important and not easy to find, <laughs> and they are a little bit crazy, I can say that because I'm married to one. Uh, so to to be a chef, basically you need the cook. It's nicer to have a, any kind of cookery certificate or previous restaurant experience, anything like that, you don't have to. Uh, food and hygiene level two, you have have to, I, I would I would at least uh, say it's better to do and you can do it online course. Power boat level two, again, kind of up to you uh, because it's if it's a smaller boat that you need to, to do it. And other way to do it is a lot of actually uh, students that decided to, oh, I'm actually kind of into cooking. So they actually take a stew cook position and then slowly graduating, moving towards the galley uh, position. So that's another way to do it. If you have, if you don't have restaurant background or cooker certificate, you can go from a cook's two position and then just kind of decide where, where, where you enjoy more. Um, this is the, the, the option. Engineering department, uh, usually uh, up until 30 meters, you, you won't have an engineer on board. The captain will do most of the engineers, uh, engineering work, only from boats over 30 meters you will start to see um, asking people, asking for, for engineers. The basic courses other than SCW and NG1, I would prefer the, uh, I would recommend to do the AEC course. AEC is the approved engine course, uh, one and two, uh, which is a nice basic course, even, even as a deckhand, because sometimes you will need a deck engineer and stuff like that. So it'll just give you an extra, extra skill to have and, and just even to see if you enjoy it, you know, if you want to take this department and it will give you an opportunity to be like a third engineer on a, on a bigger boat. And then if you decide to go up, then you go to the courses of the MEOL, the Y4, Y3, uh, all those big tickets uh, that they spend a lot of time and a lot of money uh, to do it. This is why they get paid well and everyone uh, it's very, um, as an engineer, you, you, it's very easy to, a good engineer find it easy to, to find a job usually. Um, okay. Now, for a captain of bridge, basically, uh, there is a few courses. The Atmaster Offshore is kind of, is a, is, is a captain's uh, course, but actually a lot of uh, boats ask it from a deckhand. So it's kind of, it's, it's kind of like a starting uh, kind of course to do, 
but you already have you need to have like at least 2000 miles uh, to start to do it so it kind of like depends where you are uh, in the world um, but just so you know the, this is this is a very good course to have because it, it will give you an edge even as, as a decan if, if you if you do it then you could be a, a watch leader and stuff like that uh, ocean is just gives you a little bit more mileage if you want to cross oceans and the ussg is the american course the, the yacht master offshore is ryas the royal yachting academy and the association and the ussg is the is if you're american and then as you go and decide which cap like which route you're going to go as a captain uh, we have uh, the mca route and you have the state flags route every flag like malta has their own uh, courses and and captain license that they give and so it's kind of uh, or if you have the ussg route an american route so it's kind of up to you to decide where which route you're going to go and then, then to go up to the higher ranks like OW, officer of the watch, and up to 500 ton, 3,000 3, ton unlimited, and all this stuff. And that's a career choice. Like this is your career for life because you, you spend a lot of energy on it. Now, um, I'm not going to touch too much on the courses because it's really, really interesting. And we have a lot of uh, course, a lot of uh, schools that we are actually collaborating with. To give you guys some, to give discounts and stuff like that, and so we can we can do do that along along the way, um, and we'll maybe have even a webinar dedicated to courses, uh, which is interesting, uh, just exactly to know. Now let's talk about your CV. Um, okay, fun facts about CV. Average time spent by a recruiter on your uh, looking at your CV before deciding to throw it or keep it is five to seven seconds, and I'm saying that that even uh, that's that's the average time, and that's even um, overstatement, and it's important uh, this this uh, this bit. Um, Seventy-six percent of resumes are discarded, they're, they're basically not going to look at it because of unprofessional formatting. And I, I say it again, I don't know, even I say really, really experienced crew sending Word document as a CV, please don't do it. It's a nightmare and you cannot open it. Even if you open it, it just looks weird, different formatting, all this stuff. You use, uh, if you send it by email, use PDF format, please. <laughs> it just helps us uh, look at it better. And the uh, season gives you a really nice way to do it that you can, it uh, looks really attractive, get down to the PDF, send it, or just uh, as, a, as a digital uh, platform. Uh, only 35 of applicants are actually qualified for the job they apply to, uh, which is it's true. Uh, a lot of uh, people uh, saying, uh, why not? And just uh, throwing it out there, um, which I, I don't recommend doing. Uh, there is ways, like you can say, why not? I'll, I'll give it a try. but. I would highly recommend to kind of read the description and see if you actually fit the position and what they're asking for uh, before you, you apply for, for every position. Uh, because people, you know, once you start to see your face in, in tons of different irrelevant positions and irrelevant stuff, uh, it can affect how people would look at you. If you kind of read the description, could you follow instructions, you know? Uh, so just make sure when you do it, I'm not saying about everything, like tattoos is a big thing for me because everybody says no tattoos, but there's like tons of book crew with tattoos. So uh, with this is like, I, I always say submit it and let them decide. Uh, but in some places it's good to, to uh, kind of uh, uh, know where you are and where you stand. Um, okay. 2000, 2022% of resumes were submitted online in 2014 over 20% resume are now posted online. Now we're 2022, I'm guessing, I don't have this information, but I'm guessing 98% uh, online. So you're, you're, you, the, the way you are submitting your, your CV completely changed. And very, very important, 93% of recruiters are likely to look at your candidates, at the candidates uh, social media profile. So keep it clean, make sure that they, you don't have crazy things uh, working in your profile because they will look. Uh, I'm not talking only Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, whatever they can find. This is how they do their search, and you should do too. 
Now, why, why season profile? Um, like I said, it's an online profile that you can also download as a CV to the PDF. Uh, it's a very easy and professional looking template that you don't need because this industry has a specific format they're looking for. Um, and we already created the template for you. You don't even need to be an English native English speaker like uh, how to, to have too many things written there because it's it's all kind of laid out for you. So you just go go for it uh, step by step. Shows you show, shows you how uh, it should be. In a few minutes, you, you have a, a professionally made CV, where, which is uh, you can um, apply on our system or even download and send it to e by email to to other people. Uh, you can create it from your phone uh, easily. You can do put additional photos, which is really helpful. Video presentation, which is amazing. I, I think it, it really like creates gives you an extra edge. I'll show you how to do it later. A cover letter, which is super important. We'll talk about a little bit about what is a cover letter. A precise and accurate wording. A, I know some people are kind of upset that we, we limit the, the, how, the amount of words that you can put there, a, but it's important because like I said, five to seven seconds as, as a captain looking for a hundred CVs, you see someone wrote like the whole life story on a CV, you're not going to read it. You're just going to chuck the CV. So it needs to be in a, in a precise and accurate uh, wording, um, you know, precise and concise. And that's that's the word we would even in a business plan and everything. It's a way to promote yourself. So people will see who you are, but you don't overdo it. Okay. And know your application status, which is great uh, thing. In I'll show you how, how to do it. Um, yeah, let's let's go actually to the to the dashboard. I'll show you how it looks from the inside. Um, okay, let's see how I do it. All right. So I just took a a fake a fake profile by Maria. She's our, our support uh, angel. She she helps with uh, everything. Uh, so I'll just show you. Uh, we created the CV just to show you how, how the CV uh, looks like. Uh, we'll show you uh, later how, how to do it. But this is the dashboard you see here. You have that dashboard, my CV, my contacts, both management is, is because we, we, we are actually doing some management work, job search and search for suppliers. So in the dashboard you have here, the job search area. You hear, you see the status, she's on board. So she won't be able to be in search. To change the status, it's really easy. You can actually go here looking for a job on vacation on board or hidden from search so you can change it at any time jump to top gives you a good opportunity to basically every 12 hours you can go and uh, be uh, on top of the search if, if a boat is looking so you'll be first there so just uh, make sure to 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 do that uh, go go once a day or twice a day every 12 hours you can do it um, to do jump on top this is where the your job offers will go to it soon. I'll show you how to do it. Now she didn't apply on the scene because it's not a real profile. Uh, and this is a place where you can save your profile uh, PDF format. You can edit it, your CV, uh, or share it digitally uh, with, with anyone through WhatsApp. So you can do it from your phone. Uh, it's very easy. Um, or just have a, have a look at the, your CV. For example, let's go to my cv and have a look so you see how how it looks so in here you have the basic information for me as a captain this is where where i'm looking at uh, first before anything okay i know pretty much she had four contracts she had one year in the yachting industry which is one real year so she had four seasons but actual on boats she's been one year because sometimes you have people saying that they've been five years in the industry and they've been one month here, one month there, one month there. They've in total they've been maybe three months on boat, on boats, and they said like they've been five years. So this this is the algorithm actually, or the computer actually calculates exactly how much time you've been on board. So the the age and nationality, language is important. Um, this is your crew ID, and try and get this completed. Uh, I would say over eighty percent. That's pretty much where you want to do it. Um, you do it by basically just following the instructions and do the CV. In here, 
is you put your expected salary, we'll talk about it, but this is why it's important to actually think about how much you expect to be paid in your location, which you can change, by the way. Uh, here, again, you can share. This is a video presentation where I'll show you how, how it looks and a cover letter. Cover letter, basically the cover letter is really important. Um, you put it, you can change it to every uh, new job offer you, you apply to. And basically it gives the story of your CV in, in a few sentences. Uh, you can put your uh, connect um, files to it. Uh, you can emphasize on skills that are actually important for this job because you actually read the description, you know what they're looking. You can, hey, you're looking for someone with childcare. I actually been uh, five years uh, in childcare. Not everything is in my CV, but you can. this is the, where you can actually explain it uh, in the cover letter. So a cover letter is, 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 is very important to, to have, and I highly recommend it. And the rest, contacts, all of your contact number, really, really important to be accurate because this is how the bot will contact you by uh, finding you in the contacts. A little bit of, about me, who you are uh, as a person, just a few sentences. Um, people say it's really important. I find it a little bit corny because everyone writes the same. This is why I prefer the cover letter more than about me, but you still have to write a kind of in two sentences, basically what you're all about, and what you're looking for, your objectives. Okay, the work preferences, the skills, the documents that you have and your you work ex experience. Uh, the more you actually put your here, you know, the duties, what you actually did, the better. The more information you put in your CV, the better. Uh, just not overdo it, you know. But again, precise and concise. Uh, and in here, you have the courses. You can put the, all, all of your courses. A lot of people ask me to where do I put my, my, my CV or my license. This is actually, you can do it on courses or in the cover letter. Okay, and then you can edit your CV. You can do all this stuff. And that's it. And there's a, now let's go to the job offers. Okay, so again, we didn't apply for the job of why it's important because we have this kind of pending in process, declined, and job offer hired and closed. Uh, what does that mean? We'll talk about it and soon. Now I'll get uh, back to the presentation. All right. Yeah, that's me, you know, in all the different positions. Uh, listen, I, I know it's shallow but a good picture is super important, okay? And there is a way to do a good picture. Uh, ask, you know, you, like, like you see here, you don't have to, to look really good, but you can just do the uh, picture in, in the right way and, and how you present it from the shoulder. Uh, it's, if you have a nice background of boats in the background, that's perfect. If not, just don't have like too much shade or, or, or something like this. Um, so have someone take picture of you, so selfie stuff. They don't really look good. It's too close and with the shade in the background that looks like you know the the, the mug picture or the or the passports. It's it's not good. Uh, uniforms like uh, army uniforms, not good. Um, hats, all these kind of uh, different different hats. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do it. Uh, you have to look like a yachty. So. This is kind of an example, <laughs> you know, it, there is much better, but kind of an example how, how a, a picture on a CV should look like um, and not like those. All right. So now this is the video presentation. We let Maria do the talking and I highly recommend to everyone, everyone to do a video presentation. It really helps the, the, the management, the, the manager or the vote. Well, it's not working for me now. Mm. Okay, it's not working here for some reason. I'll ask Sonia, Sonia, if you could put from our YouTube page, the link to on the, on the chat to the video presentation and uh, we'll show you the, Maria shows there how to do a video presentation, an example, but basically to show the, it's like a mini interview. So it, it, we found that it, really enhance the chances of you to getting your 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 um, your interview your actual interview and uh, the 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 captain or the or the owner um, just want to know basically how you communicate 
that your English that you can communicate, you like I say, you don't like if you have an accent, that's okay, but you have to be able to communicate in English because this is the, the way the industry works. Um, and this is, and 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 in general, how how you know pleasant you are, and, and of course, like we're not all um, good in front of camera, but it's good to to have this um, video presentation. I, I really recommend it. The additional photos, so use all the tools available. We have it. Why don't use it? You know, the cover letter, the additional photos, uh, jump to top, all this stuff, all helps. You know. Okay, to know, not to know. That that was something that I, I kind of uh, had the, um, a lot of thought when I came in, into Sydney and, and I got to see this because because this it was new to me as well. Uh, this option. So basically, the way it works. Uh, first, I'll tell you my my personal opinion. I always preferred knowing. Even if it's an the answer was no, the thing I hated the most was not knowing. And this is usually how, how it used to be. Um, and, and Season actually uh, managed to, to find a solution for it that I think is, is, is quite nice in a way uh, that is not too much harsh, you know? So we have four different uh, sections. So we have the pending. Basically pending means if you, if you see in the job offers where I showed you before, that your CV was not opened by the recruiter. The, he saw the basic profiles, but he did not even open the CV. The reasons for that uh, could be a location that the, he was looking, let's say, in Europe, and you're in the Philippines, and he, he was not looking for someone uh, from too far away. Uh, or your experience, the job description was for someone with five-year experience, and, and you don't have any experience. So those are why he wouldn't even open a CV. In process means that your CV actually was opened, and it was reviewed by the recruiter, which is a good sign, you know, okay, I'm, I'm there, he saw me. Okay, and then the client, no one likes to get a, a, a declined answer. And there is many reasons for, for declining a person, but at least you know, you know, and after a while, every job offers close in season automatically, every job offer close um, in about a week or two or two weeks. So, because we want to make sure all the jobs are updated. And usually the, the hiring process in season takes a few days uh, to a week, kind of. Um, other format, it can take much more than that. It also kind of depends for when they're looking on all this stuff. But here you can see when the job is hired or closed. Uh, that means the, the, not that you were hired, but actually the job was uh, some was hired that they hired someone uh, or it was closed and the job offer is filled. Oh, sorry, very important. Make sure that your contact info and reference contact are correct. <laughs> this is really important because before getting the interview, probably you, your con your reference will be contacted in every, every, every time. So have good references that you trust to say good thing about you first and uh, make sure they're updated and, and ready to, 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 to talk to. Um, usually only the five final candidates will get uh, recruited, will get the, the interview. Uh, that's the way it is to, to, save, to save time. No, they don't have time to speak with 100 people. And uh, so, yeah, so basically uh, they will contact you so your by, by email or WhatsApp or whatever you give the information. So make sure information is, is given uh, there. Okay. I'm sorry that, uh, just a second, let me see if Sonia said anything. Oh, you see my notes. Okay. All right. So three common questions by Greenies. Uh, how do I get experience if I if everyone asks for experience? That's the, the ma main question. Uh, I, I don't know if I have the answer for it, uh, but the, the best answer is uh, finding day work. And finding day work season is great for that because we have the geolocation that you can find work close to you or your profile is, uh, is apparent to someone that is close to them. So they see that you on the, on the YAT uh, map, on the world map. And uh, their work is always the best way to, to find experience. Um, 
other than that, you can apply, like I said, on season and asking for day work, uh, getting uh, getting some skills, even with the, that are not in the industry, but close to the industry. Uh, all this stuff, basically, you know, you, if you get carpentry experience, Polish experience, all this stuff, it accumulates to, to experience uh, that will be valuable to vote. I apply for many job offers, but I never hear back. Um, again, this is something that we've all been through and I know it's frustrating, but uh, this is, it really comes for everyone. And something that no one really likes to talk about, only whisper about, I was, it's very, very sensitive, but there is unfairness in, in everything. And everyone feels, or a lot of people feels, they don't get hired because of their skin color, because their gender, because of their age, because of their nationality, the vaccination status now, the, the position there, the, you know, they, if they're a steward, male steward, and most of the position for males, for stewardess, so like uh, they, they feel the unfairness of it, tattoos, uh, the life choices you make, how it affects your, you know, your, your job opportunities. And all I can say is that we all have some kind of limiting factors. And yes, life is not fair and the industry is not fair, but the most important thing is stay positive and believe that you'll get there. You know, if you, if you get into this kind of hard kind of emo emotions, people would see it as you, you're looking for a job, you know, and, and it kind of creates a bad vibe, you know? So you always have to keep positive, even if, if you see things that you feel that are unfair, and just uh, keep a positive attitude. And there is a boat for everyone, believe me. Like some boats prefer a more mature crew. Some boats prefer a, a woman a captain that are a woman. And we had now a boat that just today that wanted an engineer, a woman engineer, because they had to, because of cabin restrictions, all this stuff. So there is a boat for everyone. And just keep positive attitude and just grind it out until, until you get the chances. Now there are some red flags. And that we have to be suspicious about, especially when we going on Facebook and 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 getting weird emails and stuff like that. Uh, I know when I started, uh, I got uh, this kind of email: "Hey, you you got a job from I can't even remember now the, the company. Uh, they pay you crazy amount of money for a decent position." And I was like, "Yeah, how do you get it?" I start to to speak with them, and then. <laughs> And then yes, uh, just uh, to sort out the visa, just pay us uh, 300 uh, euros and uh, we'll get the, the contract ready for you and all this stuff. And uh, I was like, almost did it because I didn't know anything, uh, but I was smart enough to actually ask and they told me, no, it's a scam. And now it's a lot more easy to figure out scams, but be suspicious for everyone that asks you for money to get hired. Now there is some, it's not everyone like for, for example, in Russia, it's more custom that crew agents actually take money from crew. In in Western Europe, is not is is a taboo. You don't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Philippines, I know that you have to work with agents, uh, so they they need to get paid. It's just different regulations. Uh, so it's not for everyone, but, but always be careful when someone asks to that you pay for them to get hired. Uh, another thing is ask for a contract uh, before you get on board. Uh, really do ask for a contract. Uh, because you can get adva uh, taking, taken advantage of. Uh, we've all worked without a contract before. I'm not saying like this is deal breaker, but especially in private boats, but you are a lot more exposed to being uh, ripped off uh, when you don't work with a contract. So I would recommend, and this is also season is great with that because the onboarding process is straightforward and really, really easy. Uh, you can get the contract uh, ready and signed and it's, over there, like no questions. Uh, US is a little bit unique market in that situation because of the, because of the, um, it's a more of a freelance market. So a lot of them don't work with contracts, uh, but uh, basically uh, I, I, in general, I would say do ask for a contract, always search the boat, especially if you fly afar, uh, Google the boat, Google the owner, Google the, if you know the owner, probably you won't know the owner, but. Google the captain if you have his name, check his Facebook account. You know, just just do your research about uh, who's this uh, person uh, that you're going to basically uh, take and, and fly and leave everything you know and go, go in this boat. 
trust your instincts always. If there is a doubt, there is no doubt. I, I highly believe in that. And every time I didn't trust my instincts, something uh, didn't, didn't go well, uh, which is part of it. At first, you get shitty jobs. When you just started, you have to accept it. Like, it's really rarely that you get your perfect job, you know, immediately. But this is how you get experience, and then you can choose your, uh, your jobs better. Uh, but do trust your instincts. And if it sounds too good, too good to be true, it usually is, unfortunately. Uh, okay, now you got the interview. Uh, amazing. Basically, it means you're qualified for the job. You pretty much got the job because you have only a few people that, that um, have the same kind of skill sets. And now it's just basically a personality fit. Okay, it's not a test. Uh, so you have to feel comfortable, first of all. That's really important. Show up on time. You it's, be surprised how many crew don't show up on time. Uh, it's uh, for an interview. Uh, unfortunately, this is uh, something that uh, happened to me quite a lot as a captain, and I never like like someone that be sh show up for me. Someone that shows up late for an interview is disqualified immediately because he will not get up on time on deck. So make sure to not have this first bad impression. Um, check technical issues beforehand, like the internet stuff and all this stuff. Uh, look presentable. Uh, you know, you don't have to wear a suit, and you don't have to wear, um, you know, over the top. And if you're a girl, to not like you're not going to a party. You don't like to to, to drink, make up too much and stuff like that. But you know, you're in a job interview, you have to look respectable, shave if you, you know, I, I don't shave all the time, but, you know, before before something important, I do. Uh, and, yeah, it's important to look presentable, uh, but not over the top as well, because you're a yati after all. Uh, do your research, uh, read about the boat a little bit, so, because you have, you need to also be able to ask questions about your role, about what you expected of you, what's uh, the program of the boat, for example. To have always a, a positive and eager attitude, you want the job, you know, you're not interview like, because a, a lot of crew feels that because we're saying you have to ask questions that they're interviewing the, the other person, which is great, but it, it, it's like you don't need to, to sound like you're actually being um, interrogating the captain, you know, uh, so it, it needs to be a respectful con conversation, you have to be knowledgeable uh, as crew. And kind of uh, see that you know the, that you, you kind of know where where you know what you want from yourself and, and and what you expect from the boat and be yourself, which is highly important. Don't try to fake it because uh, bullshit you know floats. It's it, you know it's it, it really easy to to identify that someone is trying to be not himself. Uh, although I'm always saying be casual, be and be. Um, like you're in a conversation with uh, your your captain on board, your person, but you have to still be respectful uh, because he's your captain or she's your captain, and this is or she's your chief too, and uh, so that's very important. And remember what you wrote on your CV. <laughs> a lot of people actually don't remember it. I don't know if they didn't write your, their own CV. Uh, they just uh, lied. I didn't say it on the CV, but. It's really, really important. Never lie about your experience because it will show immediately. Uh, so be true and uh, and remember your what you wrote on the CV because you will be asked about it. And how much would I get paid? Oof, that's the the question. This is this is a very interesting question because you will see in a lot of places like they have the tables of how much per boat. This is the average salary on the mega yacht. This is the average salary and ta 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 ta. Usually it's not the case on, on real life. Uh, every boat has their own different person, different expectation and personalities. Um, and you have to kind of decide on yourself what salary you're comfortable with that you're not going to be, uh, it's kind of, you have to kind of negotiate with yourself. And also it depends on personality. For example, myself, my approach was always, I would get the minimum salary that I would feel comfortable to be with, okay. That if I get a, if I get an offer for two hundred uh, more uh, euros, I'm not going to jump ship and jump ship and go because uh, so I, I don't because longevity is more important than anything. 
And if they see you jumping sheep every every week or, or two, something is wrong when, when people look at your CV. So you have to kind of find the, 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 the money that you're, you're comfortable with to stay and not feel exploited, but also to, to give themselves a chance. So my, my point of view is always, I'll take my the minimum salary uh, to start with. I'll prove myself when I go up the ranks, it worked for me. My wife, for example, is, is the different. She said, I know my value. This is my number, it was usually higher, and I'm willing to wait for the right offer until, until it comes. Uh, she, well, she had, uh, I, I was just a captain. She, uh, she's a chef and there was uh, a, lot, a lot more captains than uh, good captains than good chefs, I, I believe. Um, so there's a, so she, she in, in her point of view, it was always better to wait. So if you're a couple, you have to kind of figure out for yourself what, what works and what, what, what not. If you're alone, it's a little bit easier, but you have to kind of feel your personality and what you're comfortable with. And, I, and this is why um, it's important to have a number that you are feel comfortable with, okay? Uh, so that's that's my view on, on payment. And obviously there, there are tables that you can find online on average salaries and, and stuff like that. Okay, and now we're approaching the end. Uh, just to make sure that you understand that when, when I'm talking about season, uh, it's not only to find your first job, it's basically to manage your career. And again, I'm saying it's free, it's free registration. Uh, all of your documents are there uh, on a secure server. Everything is very, very organized. When you jump and decide to be a chief steward or a captain and start to actually manage a boat, everything is, is much easier because you have all the tools ready and you know the system and you know everything there. So to find suppliers, uh, to find, uh, to share files, the crew and guest list and all this stuff uh, that are so, just everything makes makes your, your life uh, much easier. Uh, so I do, again, if you haven't registered the season, do it now. Sonia will, will put another link because we're just finishing uh, the registration and I urge you guys to, to do it. And yeah, and pin yourself on the world yet yeah, map. So this is how, actually how it looks. Uh, you see here, if, I, if I'm as a captain, I'm going and, and I kind of like deciding where, where I am and I see all the crew. This is if I do a search and then I can approach you. Approach you. And yes, that's it. Q&A time. We did it one hour in five minutes. All right, Sonia. Guys, I'm sorry I wasn't uh, with the chat. Now, now it's time to for questions. So uh, let's let's hear it from you guys. All right. Do you have any job offers for greenies? Yes, Lucas. If you if you registered uh, on the system, um, you'll see that there is a job offer on the job offers. It says available for greenies. And uh, obviously not all job offers, but there are uh, offers that are willing to train and they, they accept. Usually you'll have less salary, uh, but yes, there is. Okay. When is the right time to go over to France? That's a good question. So like I said, there is two. Uh, guys, if you can write, not on the chat, but you see the Q&A, there is a Q&A there. Um, it's better for me to, to answer there because uh, it's one by one. So, okay, so in, in the Mediterranean, so basically there's two, two big centers. You have Antibes and you have Palma. Antibes uh, is the major hub for, for, mot for mot motor yachts. Uh, Palma, you have, it's a bit smaller, but there is a lot of, of big sailing boats and uh, motor boats. So as a sailor, if you enjoy, uh, like I said, choose your path. If you like uh, as a sailor, but also a uh, motor and a little bit smaller places, you go to Palma. Antibes, uh, Sonia is actually from, from uh, lives in, in Antibes and she knows Antibes very well. Um, the good time to go there, I would say, around mid-February. And the reason I do that because you will have a, the, even now, you'll see the men starting to wake up a little bit. 
So you want to come a little bit before to get to know the places, to get to know the people, to kind of mingle and, and get to, to see. Obviously, you need to preserve your, your money uh, and probably want, you want people who not start to hire before March. Um, but, but I would say mid-February is a good time towards, if, if, if it kind of depends on your financial situation. If not, you can come in March. And by April, it's like packed. Uh, this, is, this is where everything is, is going. Um, okay, I'm from Namibia. There is no doctors that can do in G1. Can I get a verified? Yes, no, you cannot. Okay, uh, we have the same problem in, in the country that I was originally from. And uh, we, I, I had to uh, go to, to other countries to do it, to do the ENG1. You have ENG1 in uh, different uh, locations, such as Palma or Antib. You have ENG1, Port Lutherdale. The, all the big centers have this doctor. And the, the ENG1 is valid for only two years. So I would anyway do it only before you uh, get a job or just getting ready to, to get a job because the validation is every two years. Okay. As someone with no selling experience wanting to join deck team, it is worth getting our way dinghy selling uh, qualification. What do you mean by dinghy sailing? I'm not sure. Uh, if you're talking about dayskeeper, I would say yes. It gives you uh, an understanding about uh, about lines and about how to how to approach it and uh, and docking and all this stuff. Uh, kind of, again, kind of depends on your on your financial situation. Um, best thing is is actually to to start. With, like I said, with, with the day working and, and go to the location and start with that and then um, uh, go from there. But the more courses you have, the, the better. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like that. It's just like how much you want to spend uh, before you actually get a job, which is like, you have to be careful with that as well. Um, so I cannot give you like a straight answer on that. Um, but we'll, we'll, do, we'll do maybe a webinar about courses. I think it, it will be important because there's a lot of people interested. Is it worth well, it now uh, for the med season, even though I'm in the UK and we'll be going to until, until March? Yes, 100%, 100%. We, we even just today, I think we had, Sonia can tell you, but pff, like uh, 10 job offers today on the med. So people are starting to think about summer season. So definitely put your profile there. You don't have to be there, but this is why season is, is great uh, because you put your profile there, you see the job offers, you apply, you kind of understand what's going on, what the needs are. Uh, so yes, do it. It is common for couples to be hired harder. Uh, this That was my route because uh, I was married when I started in this industry, uh, but definitely possible. And uh, you can, I, I like to help couples because I know the pains. Uh, so if you're a couple and looking for a job, you can, uh, uh, send me uh, an email, niv at season.app, and we'll try and help. Um, okay, thanks, Mark. Do you collaborate with any schools in South Africa that have courses on offer for Deccan and Stu's? Um, we're just starting our collaborations with, uh, with schools. Um, let me get back to you on that, Aaron. Okay, can you send me an email also? Uh, Niv at season.app. We'll try and arrange something. If we'll have something that will actually get a nice uh, thing, we can help uh, more crew from South Africa. We really like our South African crew. <laughs> and uh, I know it's hard now with all the COVID restrictions. Um, so so yeah, we'll, we'll give, it, give our best to, to try and help our, our South African uh, friends. Again, that uh, is kind of like, finding it hard to, to get out and, and come to Europe or come to the Caribbean. Uh, could you give information about the contracts also a little bit? What kind of information, what kind of contracts you, you, you want? Uh, basically, there are different types of cont contracts. The most common is the MLC contract, uh, which gives you um, basically for the commercial boats, kind of depends on the flag, it gives you your, uh, in the contract, your salary how much of leave time you have in a year. It gives you your, basically your obligations and your rights. 
And once you have a contract, uh, you can actually uh, go. Uh, Sonia, can you write my email, please, on the on the chat or in the questions, so everyone can. Uh, don't bombard me because I'm really slow uh, answering uh, email, uh, so uh, I cannot answer every every email. Um, but yeah, the contract, the MLC is the most common one. Uh, that's usually for commercial boats. They have to do it. Private boats actually don't need to work with the contract, but it's always good to ask, and they can usually to be kind of depend on what they they you agree with. I uh, hope that helped. Where is a good place to start taking classes to acquire the necessary license? Kind of depends where you're from. And uh, basically, almost every country that uh, have have uh, schools. We also do a collaboration with certain schools and give discounts and, and stuff like that. We're just starting with this. It'll probably be a little stronger towards the the summer season. Uh, we'll have more information about that uh, later on. Um, but yeah, I, I would basically I like England have good schools uh, the, uh, for sure. Um, but Palma and Antibes also gives you a chance to if you're in the med, yeah. Uh, if you're in, in the States, it's Fort Lauderdale. Uh, you have MPT, uh, which is a great school. If you're in Palma, you have many schools. If you're in the uh, yeah, UK SA is a great school for sure. And the Flying Fish, there is quite a lot of good schools in the in UK for sure. Um, and, and but the good thing about if you're doing it in Antibes or in Pharma, it also gives you kind of also the, the connection part of it. Okay. Um, so so I oh, I used to do all the time when I needed to do courses, I went to the big centers to do the courses because it also gives me like the, the, the really important personal connections. All right, Darren, uh, may we request permanent or temporary work on our CV through season? Of course, yes. Uh, you can, when, when you apply for, for a job, you can, if you, if you go there, you can ask if you're looking for a, a day work position, a permanent position, or, or a seasonal position. You can actually see there, it gives you like what, whatever you prefer. Um, so yeah, it's easy to do it through season. How do you get paid? Bank account? Does it has to be a specific or doesn't matter? Can you also explain how about the different flags? Whoo! Okay, flags I'm not going to get into. Super complicated, super complicated, and I'm not the lawyer. Um, but yes, different flags has different regulations and different rules. Um, usually you have the red ensign flags, which are the Cayman Islands, British Virgin Islands, all the stuff uh, that a lot of uh, a lot of uh, boats and uh, uh, work with. And you have the Malta flag, which is really strong. They all have different ways to go about it. Uh, how do you get paid? Uh, usually to the bank account. It kind of depends on the again on the boat. Um, a lot of yachts like to work with the uh, transfer wise. That's how I used to work with or now they call WISE. And there are other options that I cannot remember now, but there are ways to do it as an offshore uh, account. There, there are no offshore accounts like they used to be. Okay, so it's all, you have to pay the taxes, you have to do all this stuff. Like it used to be a lot more gray area in that uh, department, but they really got, uh, which I think is, is good, but in a way in, it's good. Um, but, they, they usually, uh, I, would, I would suggest if you're not local, like for example, if you're in, in Spain and you need to open a, a local bank account, it can be a bit of a issue because you need a, like a, a nib, you need like a, some kind of document. So the WISE is actually a, a, good, a good way to, to do it. The only problem with them that they takes uh, money to get the uh, cash from the, from the machine, you know? Um, so yeah, so, be be it's kind of kind of really depends yeah um okay how do you get okay the oh, whole thank you so tash when will green two position become available for the med season okay again for look at season basically every day there are green two positions available every once in a while yeah and they're willing to train now the way I always say, usually in the start of the season, everyone asks for two years experience, at least uh, for a third stool. And they all like ask for a lot of, a lot of good, big things. 
And then after, usually after the season starts, let's say April season starts, usually after uh, May, uh, May, and then you have like a, a waves, yeah? So after the first month, a lot of a uh, crew get like, uh, see that it's not what they were looking for or the boat uh, throw the crew away. And then there's another wave. Like as you go into the season, especially in the mid, uh, you you will see that uh, the demands go lower and lower. <laughs> so the green crew uh, needs to be there and be ready. And your time will come, <laughs> you know? Uh, that's, that's the way I approach it. Uh, what should we wear? Document. Read the blog. It's actually in the blog. <laughs> but uh, when you're dog walking, uh, Tristan, thanks for that. Um, I would say the best way to do it is, is uh, basically a khaki shorts uh, with the... Uh, some people wear flip-flops. I, I used to wear flip-flops and it was okay um, in most places. Or, or, or shoes, uh, walking shoes. Um, you wear um, shorts, khaki shorts uh, with the polo blue or white polo uh, shirt. Look dignified. Um, have a, have a, your business card and your CV uh, ready in a nylon uh, bag to, to give to, to crew. Have a backpack with spare clothes if you actually get uh, hired on the spot and you need some work clothes because not all boats will give you uniforms. Um, so have this uh, online, have a little bit of snack or water and a snack if, in case you get, to, you get to, to actually spend the day there. Most of them will give you lunch, but again, you never know. So just so you have it, so you're not gonna lose on the job just because you didn't, you didn't come prepared. And I would say to come there around eight o'clock uh, when boats are starting to, to kind of realize this, you know, they had a day worker didn't show up or stuff like that, then, oh, you're there, come. Uh, that's how it is. And there are a little bit more rules you can read on our blog. I, I suggest to, to do it. Uh, hi, Zorana. Uh, what is up to limit for years for ST2 ST position? What does that mean? Year four. There is no limit for ST2 position. Uh, if you're talking about STCW courses, it's five years. If you're talking about a stool position, uh, there is no limit. You can there is stools in all all ages and all uh, uh, genders, and uh, yeah, it depends on the boat. When I when I head to Antilles, I think we answered it. So I would say around. Kind of depends on your financial situation, and kind of depends on your uh, how how long you can hold hold out. Uh, but usually, yeah, March is, is a good time, or if you want to come a little bit before. I, I used to prefer to come a little bit before, to kind of get to know before it gets really crowded, but um, it really depends on your financial situation, I guess. Uh, can we choose preferred location to work? You can... In Palma, for example, there's a lot, a lot of people prefer like a Palma-based position. Um, however, uh, I wouldn't, especially when you start, you put a limit on it, you know, uh, what is I prefer or not prefer. Uh, if you have families, it puts a limit on you. But so this is, for example, if you're in Antibes, some people are looking for only for boats in Antibes. Uh, and this is also, season is great for that because you can see where the boat is, uh, that, where she's looking. Uh, okay. Jacko, how much would it cost? in terms of temporary living while looking for jobs by dog walking. Ooh, I haven't done that in a while. I don't, I don't, I cannot say, I know there is a crew houses and you know what, you challenge me, I'll do a research and we'll put a po I will do a post on that. Okay, we'll do a post on that on our, on our, or on our Facebook group. I'll just write it. How much? It cost. Basically, all you, you, what you need, you need a crew house, a food, an accommodation. A, usually you don't need to rent a car or something like that because in the tips there is good public transportation in Palma. Everything is like you walk everywhere pretty much. Um, and some, you know, kind of depends on your, 
how much you drink and go out because this is where most of the crew spend their money. Um, yeah. Okay, Gregor, how do you uh, advance in position that can bridge department? Okay, this is again a really good question. Um, two things in, in I can I can recommend in that. Like I said, first you stay humble, you start small, you start, you, you, you give you a chance, you work your way up. When you feel comfortable to, to move up, you have to kind of gather the secure, the courage with yourself. And I know that for me, it was always, it was always uh, something that I struggled with, uh, but it's, it's a personal uh, thing. And then you say, okay, I'm ready for the next step. What I do, I, 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 when I look for jobs now, I don't look for jobs as a deckhand, I look for jobs as a first mate. And I, I, I go with it like, so this is why it's important. We have a primary position and a, and a secondary position. So you, you might actually lose some jobs, but you, you feel comfortable enough in your position and in your, in your, in your strength uh, that you are uh, applying for this position. If it's in the same boat, it's kind of tricky because you have to usually you have to uh, wait until the first mate leaves uh, or they have some kind of, some kind of rotation comes, uh, comes along. Uh, but coming from a deckhand to a bosun, for example, it's much easier, and especially it, it, it goes, you just need to work hard to work as a team, uh, believe in yourself, and yeah, dedicate yourself to, to the life. All right. Uh, what are the best places to spend summer and look for a job as a beginner? Okay, that kind of, again, kind of depends where, where you are. Summertime is the med usually. Uh, so that's Palma or Antibes, Cannes, Monaco, this French Riviera. Uh, if you're stateside, uh, Newport, Rhode Island, that's a good place to be in. Okay. Emily, uh, do you know any NG1 or SSL course in Australia? I'm struggling to find them online. Another challenge, I'll get you. Emily, send me an email. You're very, it's not really late in Australia now, no? Okay. G1 and STCW and send me an email because in Australia now there's a lot of also uh, different uh, locations, uh, different like travel restrictions. Um, so I, need, I will also need to know exactly in where you are in Australia. Uh, but I, I will find you. I, I've, I've already spoken to some schools there. Yeah. Um, the, does having braces, teeth matter? Um, it might, like I said, there is limiting factors for, for everyone, like any any kind, like if you have an accent like me, or if you're coming from, like for me, from a country that has political issues, I'm, I'm originally from Israel, so uh, I know that there was boats that I could not be on, and places that I could not be on, uh, just because where I'm from, and I cannot say it's not fair because of that. Uh, so any, or my wife has tattoos, so, for her, which is the chef, so it's easier for her, but there are some jobs she couldn't apply to. Um, so I, again, I, I, I'm, I truly believe that there are jobs for everyone. The, the further you're away from the, from the like this kind of clean uh, Anglo-Saxon look, it, it becomes a little bit harder, uh, but it's, I do believe it's possible. Uh, how do you get onto a charter commercial yacht? And how long would a charter season be on average? Okay. How to get on a charter? It's again, it's kind of like when you start, you cannot choose, you know, pick, pick and choose too much. Uh, I love chartered boats, to be honest, because you, you don't always only get uh, the salary, you get the uh, tips. But you work crazy hard and it's not for everyone. And the pressure is on all the time to prove yourself. As a greenie, I actually don't think it's the right move to go on a charter boat. I actually think as a greenie, again, you cannot really choose, but the smart way to go about it as a greenie is actually to start from, from, from private boat and then kind of decide uh, to go um, to, to charters. Um, 
and how to get there is, is the same like like in any you go to season you apply um, and if you see in season you can see which boat if it's private or charter and, and you can choose and, uh, and and apply for it and if, you, if you're lucky you'll get it um, how about charter season B so in in the med the charter season starts around mid-april until October um, a lot of this the charters, the boats will actually have seasonal jobs. So they, they will have like a skeleton crew that years round and, and then it's seasonal job. And in the Caribbean, it will be around from mm, November, I would say, around from, from around November until April. And then, um, yeah, and then some boats will go to the South Caribbean, but just the smaller boats usually. Okay. Thanks, Sebastian. Yap, I'm saying it right. Uh, can you explain how you get paid on a yacht directly on your bank account? Okay, that's what, what I answered before. So yeah, you get uh, paid through a um, bank account, kind of depends. Um, and again, there, there are some offshore bank accounts that I, I, I used to work, work with that I can recommend. And yeah, like WISE or TransferWISE, but there are, there are more. So you, yeah, you need to do your research about that. Uh, Greece is great, a good place to spend summer as a beginner in the industry looking for a job. Yeah, I would say yes, because there are not a lot of crew there. Uh, the salary will be not very good, but uh, it's a good way to, to gain experience, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how likely at 30? Very likely, Kyle. <laughs> 30 is nothing. 30, yeah, 30 is nothing. Uh, I said, ah, looking to change careers and have our own experience in our respective industry. So yeah, it, basically it, it again, uh, like I said, send me an email because I, I like helping couples, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, there is, there is no issues with 30, 30s. I, I, it can't, again, it kind of depends on the boats. Uh, some boats prefer the 20, 20 year old. Uh, I can say that I, I am as a captain always prefer the people with a little bit more mature and experienced. It fits my personality better. It's this is just like I said, it's all personality fit. Uh, how much is a crew house? Tash, thanks. Kind of depends uh, where you are. Uh, like I promised, uh, I will do a post about it. We'll do some research and we'll get we'll get back to you. Um, but every Every place, like if it's Antibes, if it's uh, Fort Lauderdale, or if it's uh, Palma, have crew, different crew houses. You can research, research it on, online and see how it is. Taxes, 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 taxes. It's a difficult uh, thing uh, because every country is, has different rules and regulations. I know British people, uh, British are, are lucky enough that they, they actually have exemptions, tax, tax exemptions. Uh, Americans don't. Uh, this is why the salaries are higher uh, in America uh, as, as an American, because they have to pay the taxes. <clears throat> um, I live now in Portugal, the taxes are really high, so it kind of depends. And I, I'm, it's better to, to talk with someone uh, that is a tax attorney, attorney can, can help with that for sure. Um, from when are you covered once you leave your country for the first time abroad for the yacht? Mm, if it's rotational, okay. So there is a lot of a lot of uh, situations here. Okay, first, if you rotational jobs are not so uh, common, uh, so if you get a rotational job, that's very lucky. And if you get a rotational job, that means that you are actually a part of the part of the boat. I'm not talking freelance job, but rotational job. And they are your insurance. That means that you sign the contract beforehand and the insurance covers you from the time you fly towards the boat until, until you go back home. In different situations, as a, as a freelancer, they can say, okay, so for example, I am a boat in Palma. I don't care that you come from South Africa. I'm hiring in Palma. So I can pay for your flight tickets. I can do, I'm not responsible for you until you got on the boat. And I can say that I'm, your joining place is in Palma. So uh, your insurance starts from the time you work on boat now you have to be careful because a lot of the boats the insurance 
covers only uh, on, on the time you spend in the boat. So if you go on a vacation and, and you can get a little bit, it kind of depends on the boat, but also with the insurance you get from the boat. Every boat or most boat will give you insurance for sure. Um, hope that answered it. Then Chad. Andrea, so German boat license accepted instead of powerboat level two in Deccan position. Uh, usually, the RYA is the most common in Europe. Uh, USSG is more common for captain position in, in the States, obviously. Um, and yeah, and, and, and all the, 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 the local captain's license uh, sets are uh, not accept, accepted. And now there, there is an MCA, MCA course that is, is getting more and more accepted. But yeah, a local, a local like a German boat license would not give you any, unless it's a German flag boat, for example. Okay. What is the difference between commercial and private yacht? Okay, that's a very good question. Uh, wow, sorry guys. We, uh, Sonia, let, you're okay to stay? I, I'm, I'm with you guys until uh, I give you another half an hour to, to answer all the questions. Uh, if not, we'll, we'll maybe have a, a post and you can answer all the questions. We'll, we'll figure out a way to do it. But I, I'm going to, I'm happy to be with you for another half an hour if need to. Um, so, different between commercial and private yacht. Basically, it depends on, on how you, when you purchase the boat or, or where you, where you uh, how you operate the boat, you have a commercial uh, license or uh, private license. Commercial license allows you to operate charters uh, in a commercial in a commercial way, and that also gives you some obligations specifically for the crew. So MLC regulations, for example, the maritime, maritime labor conventions only applies for commercial yachts. So private yachts are not obliged to the MLC regulations. Um, so that's that's the main that's the main difference. Uh, so private yachts will not, have, they don't have like, they, to work on a private yacht, you actually don't need the SCCW, you don't need all these uh, courses and they don't need to give you a contract. Um, kind of, they do, but not always do. Uh, hope, hope that answers, uh, answered it a little bit. Um, how much would you be paid for a two day work? Um, again, it's really varies. Um, really varies between the locations and the and 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 the, and the places in the world. If you work in Turkey, it's different than if you work in Greece or if you work in Palma or if you work work in the States. So it's really really hard to to say uh, exactly the the payment. And um, I can say in 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 Palma it used to be between 100 and 150 uh, euros per day. In the States. Um, kind of the same, just in dollars. Um, but I cannot, it, it really changes. Uh, so it's hard to say. Um, and again, well, if you apply and register in season, you can apply for, for, for a day work. And then you can say how much you want for a day, which is fair enough. Uh, Darren, does working on a US flag yacht affect a uh, green card negatively? Ooh. You cannot work on a on a US flag yacht, unless you're American, usually, because there is a Jones law and they, they only hire, so unless you have a green card, and then you can work on a, on a US flag boat, but otherwise you won't be able to work on a US flag boat in the States you know, or in general. Um, does the company provide flights to and from your country? Usually, yes, not all the time, depends on a lot of things, depends on your experience. Um, if you're, uh, if you're, for example, uh, come from far away, uh, sometimes they said, "Listen, like you're deckhand. Like I have, I'm in Europe. Uh, you're in South Africa. Uh, uh, like there, I don't see why paying uh, for flight. If you're a chef and you have a very or have a specific skills, yeah, they'll fly you out because they need you. Um, but in gen in general." kind of like build the more the, as you grow and you you have more experience they, you will get a um, compensated for the flight repatriation flight that means after you finish the contract is actually obliged by your contract uh, by the boat to to send you back to your home country so yeah 
in that case. Does working on a foreign flag yacht affect the, no, sorry, if you're green on that side of yacht, would you recommend to start? Whatever, whatever they give you, you know, it's just the kind of, uh, I, I like to work on smaller boats because you get a lot more experience, but also to, to try out the bigger boats because you get to understand the hierarchy and how, how operation works and all this stuff. Uh, so, so both have advantages. Um, what's easier to do, I, I, it kind of depends. It kind of depends also on your skill sets and stuff like that. Um, I'm moving from Australia to Antibes, all right. To pursue yachting, is this too late to go? No, it's not too late to go. May is good, especially if you're, uh, if you're green. Uh, like I said, there are waves, you know, in this industry. And usually after, the, after March, you have a layoff around, uh, around April, mid-April, and then in May you have another kind of uh, another wave of hiring. So you, you, you'll, you'll be all right. Like, <laughs> like worst case, you'll really enjoy it, you know, but yeah, it's, it's good time-wise. Siemens book is very useful. Yes, I maybe I should have spoken about Siemens book actually. Um, highly, highly, especially if you uh, useful, especially if you have uh, some Eastern uh, European, Russian, Ukraine passports, or even for for me as an Israeli passport, uh, it was all it was very useful um, to get into countries that uh, are harder to get uh, without a Siemens book uh, to get visas to. Uh, so yes, it is important. Uh, how to 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 obtain the the Siemens book is you have to have a board paper. So you actually have to work on a board first, and then ask for the captain. Hey, if it's a Cayman flag or British Virgin Islands flag or, or whatever, ask for them to to have a Siemens, a Siemens book. Some countries actually have, I think, their own. Uh, as as you do the CCW, they have their own uh, Siemens book. But every country has different different way to go about it. But yeah, it is useful. And resident of part of the EU Union. What is the law say to hire you to work in the EU Union? Do you need any paper to do before? So the way it works that for example, I'm guessing like if you're from now from a lot of British people are encountering it, I, I've done it uh, quite, quite a lot uh, because I, I also have uh, used to have, now I have residency in Europe, but before that, uh, so basically the way it used to, to work that you go on the boat and as you go on the boat, you stamp out of Europe for the customs. Uh, now, it's a little bit tricky because now they're starting to be a little bit more uh, rough on that and make it a little bit harder. So we, as usually the Schengen visa, you have uh, 180 days. Um, so you have three months, basically, in a period of, of six months to, to be there. And once, so, for example, now I know that in, in Italy and in, in, in Spain, it start to be a little bit more harsh on not allowing you to stop out of the boat unless the boat leaves the EU uh, for some reason. Uh, but still, in most places I know, I think in Palma as well, uh, once you're on the boat, you just go to the custom office or the captain goes with all the crew, stamp them out of the boat, and then the visa doesn't, uh, doesn't run. Now, when you go out of the boat in your vacation, you have to stamp back into Europe. It's very important. And do you pay tax on offshore income in euros and US? I don't want to get too involved in that because I'm not an accountant and I, I don't want to give you bad bad information, um, but I believe it kind of depends on your country and, and rules, yeah. The recruiters, captains pay attention to uh, whether your CCW is from an MCA certified provider. They should, they should. They don't all, all but they should, yes. SCCW is an MCA course and yeah, should have a certified this person to do it. Okay. If I have experience in cruise ships, 
not for the position. Does it count? I, I, I think the CCW does count, the, the, you're talking about the certifications, and I think the certifications of SCCW do, do, do count, and you, if you have any kind of skills, um, then yeah, they, it, it, it all counts. Uh, but like I said, moving from, from cruise ships, you have, you have to understand that you're basically starting from, from zero, like that's how people would, would look at you. Um, so you have to take it into account. Uh, but uh, yeah, but you take your, obviously your skills with you and your experience with you and your uh, certificate with you. Will this Zoom be saved? I hope so. <laughs> we, we're recording. Uh, we're already uh, almost two hours in. Uh, let's hope it will work. But yes, we, we, we did try to record it. Um, Rachel, do you ask higher greenies for day work often? Yes, yes, that's the best way to start as a greenie. Should I look for day work only once I arrive in Antibes? Yes and no, you can start to look for day work on season, actually, just to see and uh, put yourself, you, you register there and you, uh, you were happy for, for day work. And um, and yeah, and definitely once you're there, you, you have to treat, basically, you have to look, looking for a job is like a job, you know? So you have to wake up every day and go and talk with the people and go to season every day. Uh, do all the rounds, you know, and talk with, with people. It's it's part of it, yeah. But you definitely get a green crew to do their work. That's happens a lot. That's usually how the best way to start. B, okay, B, 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 and any other way to apply for B1, B2 when you don't have a contract yet? Again, kind of depends on your personal situation. Um, yeah, so he can he can kind of apply. I have to I have to say a few things about the B1 B2. Again, I, I'm talking about rules and it's kind of like dodgy, but B1 B2 is basically a tourist visa. Okay. And so there is a if you get, for example, the boat papers and you get hired before you come, you, when you go into the States, you're actually be, being stamped on a B1 visa visa, not a B2 visa. If you come as a tourist, you get as a B2 uh, visa, and then you're not allowed to work. So again, it's it's rule that I don't want to get too much uh, into, but there there are some uh, rules, and and if if you apply from as a tourist, which a lot of people uh, do, you're kind of taking a risk because you're not fully legal to to work uh, while you're in the states, you know, or to even look for work while you're in the states. Uh, so it's it's kind of again, it's kind of up to you. Uh, most places, thanks, Keno. Most places require visa. If you don't have a boating contract, then you can't apply for a visa. Is there a solution? Uh, sorry, that's the same answer I, I gave to, to Piapi. It's kind of like, um, you know, uh, your personal situation uh, stuff. But in, in generally, it's, used, it's better with the boat paper, obviously. It's always better with boat paper. Uh, but there's there are ways around it that I cannot specify. <laughs> it's just like however uh, if you find you find a way. Um, by the way, the now like B1, B2, you don't need for Europe. For Europe, you need Schengen visa. Yeah. And just so so we covered that. And uh, the Caribbean season is is still like in full swing. It's just like uh, not even in the middle of it, yeah? So it's good to have a B1, B2 visa, but if you don't get a B1, B2, don't stress, bad season is coming right up. And yeah, a lot of questions about the B1, B2 visa. Huh? That's a very, uh, especially now with the COVID, it's a very delicate and complicated subject. Uh, I'm sorry that I cannot really answer. Um, oh, I missed a few questions here. Sorry. Okay. Kim, thank you very much. Uh, the B1, B2 visa is difficult to get, yes. Probably South African. Uh, my nationality does not require, so you're not South African. 
Uh, yes, so yeah, if, if it's too much trouble to look for the B1, B2 visa, wait, wait a little bit for the med, the med is coming. Like uh, there are already people in the med now, yeah? Just so you, you know, you can survive a winter in the med uh, just by day work, it is possible. Um, how it is with charters, do you get regular salary plus tip or you get paid just by tip? Regular salary plus tip and I, I I know it used to be in the pirate ships that the captain get the 50% and the rest of the crew get the rest with 50%. But in reality, or what should be done, that everyone has an equal share of the tip. Uh, so with the charter, you have a pay salary plus tips. Yep. Is Sim, Sim, nah, nah. Okay, we talk about the Siemens book. Hi there, is there a reason I only see about three pages of job offers on the app? It is because of my current location or just my CV? It's can can be, no, it's probably not your current location. It kind of depends on how you filter it with the job offers that you see. Uh, but it is the, um, might be your position that you also only see uh, things related to your position. Uh, and like I said in the, in the presentation, in season, we don't, aggregate from other websites. We don't have any fake jobs. We don't have, um, you know, jobs that were, uh, so it has to be jobs that were actually updated in the last, we talked or we knew, know who the person is and was still looking at the last week or so. Uh, so, so this is why you, you don't have hundreds of job offers, but you know that 30 job offers you have are legit. And this is very important. Also, so you don't waste your time. What do you think about dog walking? Is it worth it? How should I approach it? It's getting harder. It still is a good way to, to, to do it. I still, like I always say, like do use all, all the tools possible. So sign up for season, uh, register, do a really nice profile, uh, get your everything there, get, get you know, every, every job offer, apply for it, for every job offer that you actually can like your, um, you have this the criteria too, and uh, yeah, and if you if you can afford it, and if you can uh, you can come to the place and be where the boats are, I, I recommend it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and how you should approach it is is wake up every morning and tell yourself today I'm gonna get a job, and then you do it until you get the job. Uh, yeah. Do you think is it possible to get a job in the coming month season if I apply now? You again, it's some people it takes very fast, some people uh, it takes time. So yeah. When the captain or owner makes you a job offer, you will the flight, yes. So again, the flights about, it kind of depends, depends your location in the world and your experience in the boat, what they are, what they are willing to, to pay or not, yeah. With season being Dubai for the annual boat show, Who's flying to, well, maybe, yeah, we might be. Se season is everywhere. Season is a digital platform. We don't need to be in one central uh, location. Um, but yeah, we'll have, we have quite a lot of uh, people from Dubai and uh, basically recruiting uh, from Dubai uh, in season. Uh, but season is not, um, you know, we don't only have one specific location. We are pretty much worldwide, um, yeah. Does the company provide flights to and from the country? Again, it's, we're not hiring. Season is not a crew agency. It's not a hiring. Uh, we don't. We just connect the boats to the crew. We have a plat platform to connect boats to crew. It's really important. We're not the one hiring. So if you, I, we get a lot of emails, please hire me. Sorry, it's not me hiring. Uh, we just uh, gives you give you a platform to to showcase yourself, uh, to apply for the job offers, and then. The boats actually, they're the one hiring you. Um, have you met some people from Norway? Yes, of course. There's, um, there's a lot of people from Norway in the industry. Uh, I only have uh, good good things to say about people from Norway and Scandinavia in general, always good sailors. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, what you must need to pack to work away. 
It's a good question. Another post, I will I will make a post about it. What you need to pack, like say you got a job and, and you need to get your suitcase uh, ready. All right, another challenge. I get good ideas from you for, for posts. Uh, you suggest going over to France and living in a crew house while looking for a job. I Yes, I heard it's quite pricey to live in the crew house. So yeah, this is again, this is what I, what I, what I say, thank you, Chane. Um, it kind of really depends on your pocket. And this is the, the, the downside of, of, uh, of, of this situation. Um, it gives you the benefit, it gives you that you get connection with, with more crew. You're there if a boat needs you now, you're there. In the other hand, you need at least like one, two months of, of, of living expenses in case you don't get, get a job. Uh, and it can get pricey, especially in South France. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like you have to kind of make this decision and, and, and kind of uh, understand. We'll, we'll, like I said, we'll do a post, we'll do a res our research and kind of try and, and figure out for you uh, how much is, is a month worth living in, in, uh, in South of France, for example, just, just from, because it's interesting uh, for a lot of people, I think. Uh, C1 DV is uh, not. C C1 uh, visa is, uh, is for cruise ships and commercial yachts, N rarely, rarely used in the, in the yachting industry because it's um, specific dates. Like on a C1, you have to, uh, to say exactly how, where, when and when are you coming. What is my email again? Is niv at cizone.app. Please don't bombard me with questions. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to answer all of them. I will write it again. Okay. Uh, is it too difficult to get couple job if we are both queenies? Like I said, it is difficult. Uh, but I've done it, and uh, a lot. Everyone basically, everyone can do it. You can choose until you get a little bit of experience to work. Um, it'll be easier to work alone, as you know. So, yeah. So that's another option. Uh, hi, Catherine. Is it hard for Filipinos to apply for yacht jobs because of the hiring partners? Can I apply for B one B even if it's still? Again, I cannot answer about the B1B2. I know for Filipinos, it's a little bit harder uh, because they, you, you need to have an agent that deals with your uh, hiring process. So not all the boats like to, to, to have this process, but like I said, there are boats for everyone. And I know a lot of boats that actually like to work with Filipino crew and they already in the process and know how to do it and, and, and they are hiring Filipino crew. Um, so, like I said, register to season, create a nice profile, uh, you'll, you'll find a boat for you. Again, uh, about the B1B2, I cannot answer. So, Mark, I'm looking, uh, going to Fort Lauderdale to go for seven seas for my SSW as well, uh, looking for three-day Deccan course, doing a Deccan course, help getting a job as a greenie. It might, it gives you some information. Um, my suggestion is don't spend your money uh, too fast, you know, uh, so get a little bit of day work, earn, you know, two, three days of day work uh, just by uh, going and, and doing what you need to do. Um, earn the course living or at least half of the course living and kind of like pay for it, but it will give you a little bit of an edge and uh, not, not huge, huge amount to, to as a green. I, my, that's my view on it at least. Guys, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to leave like really like in a, I think we're gonna have to do a, only Q and A questions because we're already an hour in the Q and A. Uh, so sorry guys, I'm just gonna wrap up a few last questions. Um, I am so sorry if I cannot answer your questions and now basically, uh, Ricardo, I don't have a yet experience, but I do have a dive master. Awesome. And the David basic deck and courses. Great. Would my peripheral be good enough to be hired? Yes, for, for the right for the right position. And yes, for sure. And if it's the right location, time depends. 
but yeah, just make sure you have everything that we spoke about the presentation. Yeah, uh, that you, you don't just give a blank uh, CV. Is there a different course than efficient decan available? Yes, there are different courses um, that don't have necessarily, you know, the necessary experience, don't need the necessary experience. There are. Um, we'll do maybe a webinar about courses, only about courses and all the options are out there. US, uh, would you say USK is a reputable training school? Yes. Uh, okay, so yeah, the USK uh, training school, the UK, UKSA training school is, is from what I know, I, I haven't studied there, but from what I know is a good training school. Uh, like I said, season work with different train schools around the world, but um, is it possible to find a job online and fly in rather than moving without having a job secured? Yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of the same. Like you have to kind of like decide um, you know financially it's always easier when you are where the boats are, but thanks to season, if you register, you create a nice profile, you find some day work around around you or, and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, you you do what you can to, to get uh, this job, uh, if you have, especially if you have different skills uh, that uh, boats uh, can can hire and you never know what's a good skill. A good skill could be a uh, child care, you know, we just had about 35 meters looking for that. Um, I have experience with professional AV technology and networking. Could this be beneficial with a start in the industry? Every skill, yes, for sure, for sure. Every skill uh, can be useful. Uh, I personally don't really understand what is AV technology in networking, but if you're talking about uh, entertainment systems, super important in boats because every engineer hates it, every captain hates it. If you have skills in that, it can really put you in a, a good, uh, good position. Just make sure that uh, you explain it in the CV what, what it means. Yeah, because if I read it as someone that has no idea about it, I don't really understand what is AV technology. But if you say um, that uh, you have knowledge of, of um, entertainment systems and uh, whatever networking systems, um, as a captain, I could say, oh, actually, I, I need it's it's good that I have a decan that has this kind of experience. So yeah, uh, guys, three o'clock. I'm sorry, already two hours in this and I need to finish. Um, what we'll do, I'll do a summarized post thanking everyone. If I didn't answer your question, please write it in the comments in the Facebook and make sure everyone to register to season. And thank you guys for being here and you've been great. It's been uh, long, but it's been uh, hopefully uh, it helps some, some of you guys. And uh, we'll try and, and uh, make sure that we're all there for you. Uh, so sign up for season, uh, register, create a profile, and yeah, let's get you guys a job. It's exciting. All right. How do I close now? <laughs>